digressing. So hi everyone, thank you so much for coming today. I'm Santiago, developer relations for Web3.js. Uh, this is part of the Web3.js Africa tour that we have started like last week. This is the first country, then we are going to Nigeria, Kenya, and Uganda. Really excited to be here today, thanks to these sponsors, mainly Change the Framework 3.js, and then we also got some support from Blink, Mora, Swiss Stranic, and CK Sync to increase the bounties. That's why we are giving this, these bounties today. Uh, in case that you don't know what is uh, Web3.js, Web3.js is one of the oldest public goods of Ethereum. It was created in 2014 by one of the Ethereum co-founders, and the first commit was in September 10. We are going to turn 10 year old in, in around one month. Uh, the main public goods of Ethereum are obviously their Solidity, Web3.js, and Remix ID. Those three are the, the only older one, like the oldest one, is Solidity, then Web3.js, and then Remix. I guess you are already familiar with Remix and, and Solidity too. Uh, something that I always like to say about what 3 is that what 3 is not a library, it's a community. As you can see, we have been doing like a lot of workshops trying to get bounties. What 3 is not like a business, so we don't, we don't really make money, that's why it's a fully good. Uh, so yeah, just trying to increase the community to get more developers into Web3, because sometimes Web3 is, is the first step for the developers to get into Web3 if you know JavaScript. So it's just really easy to start interacting with any EVM blockchain or yeah, with any Ethereum crypto machine blockchain. Okay, that was a short intro. Now let's start with the main things. The bounty that we have are for web 3 js plugins. These are kind of like NPM packages that we are going to explore today. I will show you that literally in kind of five minutes you can get started with every plugin. And then the bounty itself, I will give like all the all the qualification and, and the score and everything at the end. But it's just building a DAP with every plugin. Like one DAP with CK Sync, one DAP with Swiss Turning plugin, one DAP with the Aura, and then deploying this DAP into Flick. So we are going to do that. We are going to create like a simple React app, and then we are going to deploy it on Flick. And then at the end, you will have like a DAP working in a like live in a in a URL that is in the IPFS. Do you know what is IPFS? Yeah. Perfect. So let's just start with the plugins now. Uh, I, I was going to do examples with the scripts, but I think I will just do it with, it, with React, but that would be more convenient, uh, kind of the real example of creating a DAO. So I'm just going to start actually creating a, a DAO here. Create React app. Let's call it the Ipipra uh, plugins. Okay, now let's just wait a little bit. This is us waiting. MTX create React app. Something else, oh yeah, this is also important while you create the React app. We can go to GitHub and then I'm going to push the repo to GitHub. Because to deploy the lab on Flick, we will need to connect the GitHub repository to Flick. So I'm going to GitHub right now, I'm going to create a repository. Internet allows me. Okay. So I will call it it plugins. Then I will create a repo, empty, and then what we need to do to push the React app that we just created into this repository is that we can scroll down here, and then you will see or push an existing repository from the command line. So I will just copy this, and then let's see. Okay, the React app is not created yet. Then when, once the React app is created, we can just go there and copy paste this, run it. Then if you have GitHub connected to to your console, it will push it, and then let's create it. So the React app is created. Oh, work. Yeah, for now I'm just going to start to kind of explain the Swiss Turning plugin. Okay, this works. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I will go to the to VS Code and then I'm going to open the React app. This is the basic template that, that comes by default. So if I run npm run start, you will see the React app that comes by default, which is this. Perfect. This is what we have. I haven't touched anything. 
But before we can just push the, the repository, the, the code to the repo. Yeah, then if I refresh this repo, you can see that now I have the React app here. Perfect. That's very important because we will use this repo, this repo at the end. Okay, so now let's go back to the React app. This is what we have so far. This is empty. I'm going to remove some things just to make it easy for you to understand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this text here. Yeah, perfect. And then I will give this to machine. Okay, now let's start with the first plugin. What I'm going to do is just to kind of show you how to install the plugin and how to get started with the plugin in the React application. And then what you can do is, once you know how to get started, then you can use the plugin like more like deeper or whatever that you want to do, depending on the use case. So my idea is just to help you get started with all the three plugins today, in these 30 minutes. So for the Swiss Learning plugin, we can go to the documentation. Oh, I will also share the slides in, on Twitter as well, Santiago so Gabriel on Twitter, and then you will be able to access to all of these. The links to the plugins are here. In every plugin, you will see. Perfect. And then when we open the Swiss Tronic plugin, we will see the kind of getting started guide here. But then I'm going to do that from scratch. The first thing that we need to do is to install the plugin. So we need to copy this npm install Swiss Tronic. Let's go to the React app. Okay, so first, npm install WebTree. So we install the WebTree library. Then the npm install Swiss Tronic. Then let's check in the package.json in the dependencies. We have web3 installed here, and then Swiss is running, and then Swiss is running here as well. Perfect. Web3 is up here. Okay, so we have web3, and then Swiss is running in the package.json. So now we are ready to get started with the plugin. The first thing that we need to do is to import the modules. So we need to import two modules, the WebTree library by typing import WebTree from WebTree, and then to import the plugin. So to import the plugin, the same thing, import Swiss Tronic plugin from, and then here you can see, in my case it's just auto-completed, but here in the documentation of the plugin you can see what I'm doing. So yeah, that would be also easier to follow when you're not with me. Uh, the second thing that we need to do is to initialize an RPC endpoint or a provider. So to do that, initialize provider. Uh, this can be an RPC endpoint or injected provider. The injected provider is MetaMask, and I will do it. Yeah, I will do it with MetaMask. That would be kind of like the normal thing that, that you do. So we need to type cons web tree, and then we need to initialize the web tree object that we imported here with window dot ethereum. And then what happened here is that, for example, if in the front end I have MetaMask in, in Mumbai, then my DAP is connected to Mumbai. Today, if I have MetaMask connected to Ethereum mainnet, it will be connected to Ethereum mainnet. But the other way that you can do is that instead of putting window.ethereum, you can hard code a string here. The strings are in changes.org. Show you really quick. These are the RPC endpoints. And then you can just copy paste this RPC endpoint from ETH LAM RPC, and now you are connected by default to Ethereum. Even if I have in, in MetaMask Mumbai, then that will be connected to Ethereum because we hard coded this RPC endpoint here. So that really depends on what you want to do with the app. If you want to allow the user to be connected to any network, so you put Windows.Ethereum, or if you want to, to hard code like a, a network, then you just put the RPC endpoint. In this case, I will just put Windows.Ethereum. And then we need to register the plugin. I'll just show you what's in the docs as well. To register the plugin, we just type web3.register plugin, and then we create a new instance of the Swiss Tronic plugin. Web3.register plugin, new Swiss Tronic plugin. Perfect. So, so far we just imported the two modules. We wrote these two lines of code, initializing the, the Web3 module and then initializing the plugin. And then after that, the plugin is ready to use. So I will create a function here to use the plugin. Let's call it this plugin. And then if we want to access to the plugin, 
Uh, in this case, Swiss Turning, let me give you a, like, a little overview of Swiss Turning. Swiss Turning is a layer one, but every time that you need to interact with Swiss Turning, you need to encrypt the data. But then what happened is that that's really annoying for the developers. So Swiss Turning created a Web3.js plugin to put this encryption into a plugin so you don't need to encrypt anything. You, don't need, you just interact with Swiss Turning like in the same way that you interact with Ethereum, and then the plugin under the hood is encrypting all these things. But I, I just tell you that so for you to understand the whole context, but you don't need to care about encryption at all. So let's interact, for example, with um, ERC20 token. So I will go here in the other slide. Uh, I, have, yeah, I have a lot of Swiss Turning resources, like the link to the plugin, the link to the testnet, the pulse set. Uh, also, if you want to check the incentivized testnet, but I will go to the EVM Explorer that they have, and then I will take a random ERC20 token. We are going to interact with that token. They have here the ERC20 tokens. But, yeah, but then to interact with the token, we need to initialize the contract. To initialize the contract, we need to type new web3.if.contract, and then we need to pass two arguments. One is the ABI, and the other one is the contract address. So the contract address. Let's choose, for example, this one. And make counter. So I just copy paste the address here. And then for the ABI, you can just Google ERC20 ABI. And then you will get this ABI. For all the ERC20s, you will be able to use this ABI. And then I will just create here an ABI.mjs. Then I will import the ABI here as well. And now we are interacting here. Yeah, now we are initializing the contract. I'm going to store the contract in this ERC20 variable. And then if you want to interact with the ERC20 ERC like instance, we just need to type ERC20.methods.name. Name is the function that we are calling in the smart contract. A ERC20 token will have different functions like name, decimals, balance of, etc. But just yeah. to show you really quick, I will do the same name. And then dot call. If I want to check the decimals, then I will just do dot decimals. I will just show you both examples. Then we are going to store the value in a variable here. Let's say result. Let's put that way. And then let's see here result to wait. Perfect. And then I'm just going to create this in the mouse code. And then this last is needed. Do not create any use effects. Perfect. So what we are doing here is basically interacting with the ERC20 contract in Swiss Turning the same way that we can do it. Right? The only difference is that it's not Swiss Turning network. So to do that, we just create a button here that will do something. Basically, when the user clicks on this button, it will trigger this this function use plugin. So to do that, we just type here on click, and then we put the name of the function use plugin. So let's go to the React app. You can see that we have to do something. And I will create the result in the console. So if I click here, let's see which oh, our RPC endpoint is not set. Oh yeah, because we are not interacting with this journey. So what we can do is here, we just hard code the Swiss Tronic uh, RPC endpoint. Or in MetaMask, we can also change to the Swiss Tronic network. So I have it here. Yeah. Let's see how it works. Perfect. So I click here, and then as you can see, name, name hunter, that's the name of the token, and then decimals, 18 decimals. So that's basically how we interact with the ERC20 contract in Swiss Tronic. Any questions with this plugin? Then if you want to send transactions, whatever, it will be the same as any other EVM options because as I told you, the encryption is happening under the hood of the plugin. Is this one clear? Perfect. Also in the here in the documentation, you will see other examples, sending transactions, making calls, uh, interacting with contracts is what we just did right now. Perfect. So now let's jump to the second plugin. You can see also different links here for you to, to check other other things, that templates, SDI contracts, if you want to go deeper into Swiss training. The second one, CK Sync. So for CK Sync, 
what we need to do is just open the npm package. So let's install the CK Sync plugin. So npm install web3 dash plugin dash CK Sync. I will actually remove this. Things. Oh yeah, I will. Yeah, I will actually push this code. So I will just like copy this. So I'm going to add this. I'm going to remove the Swiss Frank plugin, the API. Okay, so as you can see, the only thing that we have so far is we import the web library. We initialize the web library again with Windows.Ethereum with the injector provider. Yeah? You're what, sorry? Confused. Confused, why? Yes, but as you can see. Why? No, no, I haven't started. No, I mean, it's not like for the second and the third. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm just going to do it now. I just, this, is a, this is the first one. That was, so it was the first one. Now I'm going to do CK Sync. So I just installed CK Sync here. NPM installed CK Sync. We can check the package.json that we installed the CK Sync here. And then let's start with the CK Sync. So apparently, I just wanted, I just wanted to remove the things that we did. Oh, so so they already start again. Oh, you already did this. I'm just going to start now with the CK Sync. Yeah, and then I'm not I'm, I'm, I'm touching anything yet. Yeah. So the first thing is to import the plugin. So we need to import CK Sync plugin from here. So that's the first thing, importing the plugin and then importing the Web3 library. Then we initialize the Web3 object again. And then we need to register the plugin. So that was the same thing. Instead of new Swiss Tronic, now we put new CK Sync plugin. And then here in the parentheses, we need to send the CKC RPC endpoint. Everything is here in the, in the documentation as well. Uh, in this one. In the official website of CKC, you will see here the getting started. And then, yeah, you can start following all the documentation here, but I have it here in the slides as well. This is the RPC endpoint that we are going to hard code to interact with CKC. Perfect. So, so far, I haven't used the plugin yet. Just initialize the plugin here. And then what we can do is to write this web3.cksync.rpc.get.details and we are already using the plugin. Just by typing web3.cksync.rpc and then you can see all the different methods available of the plugin. I will just do get blog details and then we can input the number of the blog. So let's say that I want to get the blog details of the blog number 1000, right? Then this will return the blog details. And then let's just print that in the console. Perfect. And then what we are doing is we are when we press the do something button, this do, do something we call the use plugin function, which is this one. Interacting with the CKC plugin, just web get log details. Here in the documentation, you will see all the different methods available in the plugin. But yeah, in this case I just Want you to, to get started with that. So in this case, we're going to get a lot of details. So let's go to the React app. Let's click and do something. Perfect. And then as you can see, we get all the blog details of number of, of the block 1000, right? And then if we want to check, let's say, only the timestamp, so we can just put dot timestamp. And then we are getting only the timestamp of the block 1000, which is here. Right? And then that's basically how you can get started with the plugin. You can also do web3.cksync.rpc.get main contract. And then you will return the main contract of the CKSync network. For those who don't know what is CKSync, CKSync is a layer 2. Are you already familiar with the layer 2 concept? Yeah. yeah. Okay, perfect. So yeah, this is a layer two on top of Ethereum, and, and then let's also click this again to see if it returns both. 
Okay, this is the timestamp, and then this is the get main contract. And that's basically how you can get started with the CK sync plugin. Simple as well. Let me just copy this again. I'm just copy, sorry, copy pasting this app. So to have like one app switch running, app CK sync, and then app aura for you to check the code later. Now, now let me remove here these things again. Okay, so as you can see now, I delete the things again. So we just have the web tree. We just initialize the web tree, and that's it. There is nothing here. So we need to install the Aura plugin. We go back to the slides. Here you can find all the different resources for CK Sync, the plugin, the documentation, mainnet explorer, testnet, etc. Okay, and then the Aura AI plugin is actually a really interesting plugin because it's like on-chain, let's say, chat GPT. So if you want to interact with the Aura AI, you just need to call a smart contract, you send like a prompt, let's say generate an image of a, an eagle, we are going to do that one, and then it will generate the image. And, and that's it, and you can basically interact on-chain with AI, which is really, really useful. So let's just open the plugin here. So we just need to install the plugin here, copy paste in our React app, and we have installed for our IO Web3 plugin aura. We check in the package that JSON that the aura plugin is installed here. Perfect. So first thing, import the plugin. So import Aura plugin, Aura IO. Then the second thing is to register the plugin. Remember that we always need to register the plugin to be able to use web .plugin do something. So web register plugin, new Aura plugin. But then here, we need to initialize this with, I think it's here called change. Yeah, Aura is available in Sepolia and Mainnet. Uh, I will advise you to, I don't know if you need to test that as well, but just use Sepolia, it will be useful. If you need to test that token for Swiss Tronic Secret Sync for Sepolia, let me know. I can send you uh, tokens. And then we need to specify the chain that we are going to interact with the Aura Oracles. So in this case, oh yeah, I have more here. I was just going to use Sepolia. So we need to put chain.sepolia, and then here we also need to import the chain. And we also need to import the models. Yeah. So if we go to the documentation, we can see that here, import web tree, import models for a plugin chain. Then the, the we need to initialize the, the web tree model, the web tree library. In this case, I initialize it with window.ethereum. So remember that we need to have Sepolia in the MetaMask. That would be really important. I will show you if we get an error. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is yeah, we still have some time, so I will do this uh, So Now we are going to interact with the Aura Oracles. So the first thing that we need to do is to create a prompt, right? So who can tell me a prompt? Random prompt? Something. OK, no prompts? Um, it's good in Ghana, I guess. The red one? Uh, let's see what we get. <laughs> let's see what we get. I don't, I don't know. No expectations. Uh, okay, so that's the prompt, right? We are going to send this prompt to the Aura Oracles. The second thing that we need to do is to estimate the fee of this prompt to see how, how much it will cost. So we need to put estimate fee, then await web tree dot Aura, that's how we access like the plugin, then dot estimate fee. And then when we put the parentheses, we need to send the model. I'm going to explain to you what is the model right now. Aura has three types of models. I have it here in the slides as well. Llama tree, text to text model, then open LM, highly performant trainable text to text model, and then a stable diffusion, that is text to image. So I'm going to, to use the stable diffusion 
So we just say models of the stable equation. Then we can say estimate SP. Perfect. So that's how we estimate the field. Then the second step that we need to do is to actually send the prompt to the oracles. Right? So to do that, we need to use this function web3.ora calculate AI result, then open the parentheses, and then you see the different arguments that we need to send. The first one is the prompt, like the address that is sent in this transaction. So to do this, we need to connect. This is a really good thing that you will need to learn now. We need to connect MetaMask. So we need to know what is the prompt address that is sent in this transaction. So to connect to MetaMask, we are going to use the web tree dot e dot request accounts, and then this will return the accounts that the user connects in an array. I'm going to print that here as well. Then comma the string, the prompt. So the prompt is this one that we have here. Comma the estimated fit that we previously estimated here. So the estimated fit. Perfect. Then after that, this is basically generating the results. And how we can fetch the result is fetch result is using the web tree dot aura dot um, function of get AI results. Get AI result, and then we just put the model again, models dot stable diffusion, and then connect. You can choose whatever. I'm going to choose this one in Bucharest. So I have 0 0.78. Then next. Confirm, then as you can see, this is my account that I just connected, right? It's only one. And then you can see the other pop up to send the transaction. So this is actually calling this um, calculate AI result. So I'll just click confirm. Once the transaction is confirmed, we'll get the transaction hash here in the console. Here is the transaction hash. If I click in fetch result, look that it's not returning anything yet. But the Oracle is doing its magic. Let's go to Zephalia to check the transaction hash. We can see that we just send the transaction to interact with get AI result. We calculate AI results. So yeah, we're just calling the Aura, Aura Oracle smart contract. We just call with this function. We send these parameters. Now let's try to fetch the result now. Okay, so we got the hash. Right, so this hash is the image. And then to open that image, let's see if I have it here. I have that in gray. There is a specific um, URL ipfs.io slash ipfs ipfs slash and then you paste the hash that we just got. We just click in enter and let's see what we get from the AI right now. <laughs> okay, that's that's what we got, right? Uh, but you can you can still use like the other different models. Um, this is the stable depression. Remember that they have the llama tree and the and the the llama tree and the opal llama. So yeah, this that was a really early image. Normally, I tried it with different things and it was way better. It was really ugly. But yeah, that's how you can interact with that. If you want to do something else, you just change the prompt, and then it will, it will change, right? Uh, OK, now here you have the resources. Oh, yeah? Sorry, okay. um, for the open LM, right? Are we going to like, train the model? Supposedly, yes. But then if you, you know, because I don't work for Aura, and I work for Web3.js, and we have the tool, okay. if you need any, if you have any question, from CKC or, or, or Swiss Tronic, I can also, if I'm not able to help you with that, I can directly like, connect you with them as well. Uh, but I can ask, yeah, I can ask uh, them to, let me just ask them right now that question. Um, okay, and now let me just quickly deploy the DAP to click. This is really important. Okay, yeah, five minutes. This is a really important thing that you need to do because if you don't deploy the DAP, then there is no DAP, right? First thing that you need to do to deploy the DAP to click is to go to the package.json package and add this field. Home page and then add a dot. So we can come here, home page, dot. Simple. Then after we do that, 
we just push everything to GitHub. Then you can see that on my GitHub was updated. Perfect. So this is the, the, the repo, right? Then we need to go to click. You can create an account in click if internet works. Work. Yeah, let's see if it works. I will explain to you for now the bounty. Uh, so what we have, this is the criteria for the bounty. We have kind of like a point system where we are going to give you points for every little bullet point. So the first one is the innovation and creativity of how you use the plugin, right? Like I just show you the really easy thing of Swiss running interactive with a smart contract to get the name of IRC20 token. If you do a dab that gets the name of IRC20 contract, that would be fine, but maybe someone else will do something better, right? So everything depends on the creativity of the other people. You can do more things than, than just getting a name of, of a contract. So that's the first criteria. Then the second one is, in your DAP, you need to create, create a readme explaining how you use the plugin, or how the DAP is working. Because sometimes we go to a DAP and we don't know what's going on. That's why we need to go to the readme and see how you use the plugin, what the DAP is doing, etc. Then 0 to 20 user experience, 0 to 10 the front end, you can make it beautiful, 0 to 5 if you make a video, and 0 to 5 if you make a tweet, tag it for 3 days and change it. Uh, that means that this body is like, if you got the best innovation and creativity, this, if you get 20 here, it's because you got the best, so a really good and clear reading, etc. Uh, let's try to click again. Okay. Then, the bounty prices that we have is $800 for creating a DAP using the CKC plugin, specifically with Paymasters. That's also in the documentation. Paymasters allows you to let the user send a transaction and pay the, tra the, the gas fees in any token. Not only in the token of the network, paying that in any token. So that's for $800 for creating a DAP using the CKC plugin, Paymasters specifically. Then for $100 for using the CKC plugin in general, you can do whatever you want. Then $500 for the best DAP using the Aura AI plugin, and then $500 using the Swiss Tronic plugin as well. And we have issues with Click. Oh, with the internet. Maybe I will try to share with my phone. Oh, I can share. Um, yeah, if you have any questions deploying to Click, maybe let me know. Uh, during the event today or tomorrow, and I can help you because it's not working. Yeah. To be to be to win the bounty, you have to. Like, only a... Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, if that's one of the requirements of the bounty. I think that's also in the high uh, platform um, that you need to deploy the DAO fleet, and then you will get like a link uh, for the DAO. Let me just show you really quick what I mean by that. For example, this was the results of the of the workshop that we did on Saturday, and we got a lot of people here. So let's say, for example, the belt. Mm -hmm. The flip URL is this, yeah. and then when you open this, this is uh, Joel's DAP, mm -hmm. right? So basically, this is what you will get. Your DAP will be deployed here, or in my case, if I deploy the DAP to flip, this is what will be in on flip right now. That's what I want to deploy, but it's not it's really working my internet. Uh, so yeah, just deploy the DAP on click. I can help you with that. That's just creating an account, connecting the account to GitHub, and that's it. And you will also get a Git code in case that you win, uh, you win any of the prizes. You will get this. This is connected to your wallet and your GitHub. Have any questions? Yeah. Uh, okay. Actually, let me just finish this, and then yeah, then I can tell you. I can ask you. Let you ask. Here in this spreadsheet, in the slide number 19, we have some ideas of DApps that you can create. Uh, actually, of only these three plugins. These other three are not, are not for, for the for the Ida crowd. But yeah, you can just come here and check some ideas here to build DApps. 
And oh, last thing that is really interesting, uh, this is out of the, of the hackathon, but just to kind of tell you as well, I have a friend who works at Superfluid. Uh, they are hosting a Superfluid guild. And just check this Notion page. And if you know Solidity, front end, back end, or maybe if you're not a developer, but you know design or marketing as well, feel free to check this. You can uh, apply here, you can scan a QR code as well, and they can take you to back up to their hacker house in, in DevCon. Uh, that's also in the slide 20, just giving, like, making, the, making the favor to kind of promote this a little bit. Uh, and yeah, that's basically everything. Uh, you can find us in Chainsafe PH, where 3 underscore J is. I'm going to publish these slides on my Twitter, Santiago DevRel. And um, yeah, all the, everything is in the slides, I guess. Uh, but yeah, you can ask me. Yeah, I have a question. Okay, yeah, um, first question. Um, where are you not smart? It's not like me, that's um, work with Hadas, right? From what guys would do in my smart contracts. You know, it's you already come to the details of JS. Does that have any um, effect on how um, people yeah. work? I think it's hard, hard, hard that allows you to interact and test contracts, but not really to have like a front end. Or how are you going to do the front end? Yeah, that's not. Do you think hard hat as well? No, no, no. For the front end, I was going to use Bargme, but now oh, okay. with this, I'll cool. have to uh, obviously change the fast. What I'm saying is for the smart contracts, right? I hope that using ethers with JS. That's fine. You just need to use the plugin. Right. That's the only thing. You can use, even if you want in your React app, you can even have here, let's say, uh, import ethers or VM as well, but then you will also need to import the plugin. Okay. So you can even use ethers as long as you use the plugin. That's, that's the only thing. And then to use the plugin, you will also need to import the web tree. But yeah, if you know ethers, that's, that's completely fine. Right. Uh, that. Sorry, that's what it's done. Yeah. Um, for Flink, are there technologies that, is it just um, React, Next.js, apps that can be deployed. Or? They have, yeah, they have several ones. Um, the Flick Dev Rel is also around here. Uh, and in case that you are struggling with Flick, I'm sure he can help you. I always use React, but they have different different like, frameworks that allow you to deploy oh, so the the app there. Yeah. Any other questions? Clear. Amazing. I will be around. I'll be here the whole day. Also tomorrow. Uh, and yeah, also, if maybe you don't see me, you can text me on Telegram or Twitter, Santiago DevRel, or even LinkedIn, whatever, and I always have my phone, so I will always reply quick. Don't worry about that. Santiago, just one question. Yeah? Yeah, where you're using and get accounts to the web right? Yeah. I don't think maybe the team would have get the account of the Yeah, that's also fine as well, yeah. Or even, even if you want to do it this way, but that would be weird. The, old, the other thing that you can do is web3.it.wallet.at and then pass a private key here. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that would be like weird if there is like a hard coded uh, private key there, right? But yeah, that's another way. Uh, yeah, you can also use web3 model or whatever. I just think this is kind of really easy, this line of code. Uh, but yeah, feel free. The plugin is the only thing that you need to use in the lab. Then if you want, after that, you can use whatever you want. Yeah, perfect. Any other questions? Okay, so amazing guys, thank you so much for coming today and we'll see you around.